Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. We're going to start off with Chuck's Guide. I'm sure you are aware of the Chuck's Guides that are out there, so we're going to use that because it's lovely pre presented and stuff. So stand by and then we'll do the flying. Yeah, we figured there aren't enough pictures in the manual to keep Chap's attention. Exactly so right. we are going down to the RB-15 anti-ship missile. 68, should say, uh, tutorial 3, I'll be 15F anti-ship missile God, this looks confusing. Okay, you do your stuff, blood. Uh, are you far away? Right, uh, let's see. So we'll start on the left-hand diagram. Um, as with everything in the Vigan, it involves waypoints. So what you're going to do is set up your waypoints to fly to where you need to fly, as per usual. Um, I generally put your the target waypoint on the rough known area of the ships. Set that to a target waypoint and then simply fly your route and fly towards it. Uh, then once you're flying towards M3, you're going to flick your radar on and you're going to put it to the maximum range. Probably fly about 500 meters, that is a good compromise between being able to see far enough and not being shot by things. Um, and just wait until on your radar you get some nice black dots appearing and hopefully they'll be around the area of M3. Uh, this is when you want to start setting up the waypoints for the missile. I need to. And, sorry, I've got to interrupt you here. Yeah. It's it's, so it's got way. It's got on the picture on the left. It's got uh, Mike Three is nowhere near the naval target. Yeah. Well, so in this the case, they've set Mike Three as the point at which you turn out and find the ships. So you, you can do this in a number of ways. Like the um, that is simply a point to guide you to a location, and you could choose that location to be the ships, or you could choose that location to be. Uh, a point on land in which you're going to turn out to sea. Mm. So it's up to you. It's how you want to plan the mission. And um, so far, we've put M3 or, or whatever endpoint it is on the ships because you know you just fly towards them, and you should find some ships at the end of it. Mm. There's some more complicated stuff you can do about if you don't know where the ships are and you're trying to mm. find them. But we'll, we'll stick. We'll assume we know roughly where the ships are mm. uh, for this. So. We've flown to M. We've flown our course. We're flying towards the ships, and this is where the BX waypoints come in. So they are stored in a different location in the memory to the other waypoints. So they are different uh, to the B waypoints. Like BX6 has no relationship to B6, and these have a, a, a different. Each have a, a special meaning, and you're basically telling the missile to do certain tasks at certain points. So we'll start at the uh, we'll start at the back actually. So BX9 is where, imagine you has the missile hasn't found the target, and it's going, well, what do I do now? And it flies to BX9 and then detonates itself there. So if you, if for example, you're targeting uh, some ships in a harbor, and the town on the other side, you set BX9 to be back out to sea, so it'll turn around and explode out the way of any civilians. So that's very nice. Uh, coming back to BX-8, this is your target waypoint. It doesn't have to be exact because the raid, the missiles do have radar, but you need to have it in a you know a reason within at least a mile of the ships. Uh, it means you can get a good target. Um, then coming further back, we have BX-7. So this is a course correction it's going to make shortly before heading to BX-8. So this is kind. It, it will fly. It won't fly a direct path. It'll fly fly slightly off. And when it hits 7, it'll turn towards BX-8 and uh, uh, try and uh, hit the target. Coming further back, we have BX-6. So when you launch, you're going to be at an altitude of anywhere between 50 to 2,000 feet. That's the uh, release envelope. Meters. And meters, sorry. Um, and uh, if you, for example, release at 1,000 meters, that's not ideal when you're trying to hit some ships at lower altitude because that's, that missile is easy to blow up. So it'll fly to BX-6, and when it hits there, it's going to descend all the way down to the... Uh, literally, you can set this in some settings, but I think it defaults to sea skimming, so literally skimming on top of the waves, trying to get as low as possible, trying to get underneath any uh, anti-missiles, uh, anti-missile missiles that the, the fleet might fire. Cool. So then, quickly running back forward, BX-6, drop down, BX-7, course correction, BX-8 is where it's expected to target. If it doesn't find it, flies onto BX-9 and detonates. If you don't put, Happy so far. If you don't put 6 and 7 in, will it uh, do stick to its default? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go through that. So, what you are trying to do is, when you find the target on your radar, you're going to set BX-8. Now, when you set that, it's going to look to its memory and go, I don't have anything in 7 and 6, so I'm going to make it up. And it kind of works if you're going to fire pretty quickly. However, 
BX-6 and 7 are set relative to where your aircraft was at the time you locked BX-8. So if you kept travelling forward and get closer and closer to your target, BX-6 is going to remain fixed and you're, it's going to become behind you. Oops. That's where we had the problems yesterday, um, on Thursday. Is We saw the target about 100 kilometres away, locked it up, but you can't fire until you're 70 kilometres away, so we just kept going. And by the time we were there, BX-6 was behind us, and the missiles turned around and went, well, this isn't right. And the moment they think something's not right, they'll detonate themselves to, for safety. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, rather than flying off. So, into so what? How? So, what, I'm trying to figure out what you actually did wrong then. Um. So, the, what the procedure we went through is we're flying towards the target. We see the ships on the radar. We pre we type in BX8, lock the uh, lock that waypoint up. The computer sets six and seven automatically. We keep flying, and those automatic points, which were set relative to where my aircraft was when I locked mm -hmm. BX8. Are now I'm flying past them on my right, right hand side. So you should only lock the target then when you're ready to fire. That's that is one option. Uh, but with some experimenting earlier, I prefer the other option, which is to simply adjust BX six and seven manually, which I'll show you how to do. There's um, also a third option. If you know reasonably, if you know with reasonable accuracy where the ships are going to be, you can set all those waypoints up in advance before you even get there. Yeah, so you can, as uh, Stahl says, you can type the actual coordinates in beforehand. That's preferable when you are attacking ships in a harbour, because not only are they static, so they're not going to move, but um, you also have the advantage that when you're out to sea, your nav system's going to drift, because it has no means to correct itself. And if you set the waypoints to be fixed locations, they are going to drift with the, the navigation system and you'll miss. I'm not convinced by this second method, chaps. The reason is I'm going to eventually give you um, uh, fleets. I'm going to give you a big blank space of 100 miles by 100 miles where the fleet could be, and you've got to find it yourself. You couldn't set 6 and 7 in that case at all. No. Um, so, all right. So we, we might as well go through how you set waypoints at all. So in order to access these funky BX waypoints, all you have to do is there's a special BX button. So let's scroll down to the next page. And can you see, I think it's on the bottom right hand picture, the, the BE 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm -hmm. 7 points. Uh, you see on the far right hand corner, just above El Mal, is BX. So when you are in Act, Pause and Out, you press BX, and then on the data panel, you press the button, the number, corresponding to the waypoint you want. So you press BX. I've, I've not walked up to up chat. I'm looking for BX. I'm on page 69. Yes. Um, and look look the bottom right-hand corner, so that's going to show you the data panel got, and the B1234567. Yeah, I've got one, one E, one D. E, yeah, D. that's the one. So they, they, it's pointing to oh, different see checks. Roger, I found it. It's point, referring to different mm. checks, but we just obviously want a picture of the cop. Roger, I've got it. Uh, so you see BX... X, BX. Press that button. Next, you press the appropriate number on the data panel, so 8 is the one you'll do first. Uh, and then that's going to select that BX8 point mm -hmm. active on your nav system. Then all you have to do is press T1 uh, to activate editing of that waypoint. And you'll see on your radar, there will be the little crosshairs of where that, or a circle of where the, uh, the waypoint is, and a crosshairs of where you're going to put it to. Simply slew it with the radar stick over the target, okay. press TV to lock it, and you're done. And that's changed the waypoint. And you can then do this for BX7 and BX6, respectively. Uh, but if you set BX8 first, it'll do that automatic placing of 6 and 7, and then you just simply adjust them. Right. And what I tend to do is select BX6, and simply, if you go left it will change the angle it is from your aircraft. And just scroll it left a bit, by 20 degrees, and that'll put it easily within scope. Even if you travel 20, 30 kilometers forward, it'll uh, still be in front of you. Okay, I've not used the radar yet, but we'll figure it out. I haven't used the radar more. yet. No, never turned the radar on. Hmm. Okay, we'll oh, figure it out. Fun. Right. I highly recommend not adjusting BX7 first. I did that earlier, it didn't go so well because I went past BX6. And once it's off your radar, it becomes a pain in the ass to set up. Uh, I I do I then tend to edit BX7 because it's really close to BX6, and if you change six, you have to change seven, otherwise it will do a, a weird route and it will kill itself. 
Okay, are you happy with way how to set the waypoints Roger. and what they do? Copy. Marvellous. Uh, what do we want to go to next? Ah, so this is a very complicated missile with lots of cool modes that you can do to change it. We're not going to go through all of them because I'm fairly convinced you'll forget all of them, mm, but um, what you need to know is is there is a data address inside the computer and then each position of the, the the number you tell it, so like the first number will mean something, the second number will mean something else, etc. Uh, and you type that number in and it essentially like going down a config or some settings in a program and saying I want option 2 and I want option 3, etc. Mm -hmm. um, however, they do give you some handy presets and if you type in 8, 4 zeros and 2, so I believe that's address 80 and then the data is uh, 0002. Uh, that will give you a preset, which is the one that I've used all the time and it works pretty well, is multiple targets, medium search area. Yeah, that's, that's the one I use as well. Yeah. Uh, it so... should be said that there's two different settings for multiple targets. One of them just looks for the closest three targets uh, from the search area center and selects one of them randomly. The other one looks at all targets it can see and selects one of those randomly. Yeah, well, we'll stick with so eight four zeros and two. That's the number you got to remember. What's the number cap? Eight four zeros and two. Excellent. So all you need to do to set this up is first of all, master mode needs to be in nav initially. We'll change it to ANF shortly before firing. Uh, you want to type your code in, so you get attacked eight four zeros and two. Make sure you reset that to uh, act pause out. Uh, then you want to go to, do you know the two switches, the um, Siri and Impulse switch? Negative. Right, so let's find you. Yes, I, 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 see a bit, I see a picture of Norm and Siri. Uh, yes, so if you go on, I think it's page 69, at the bottom left hand corner, mm -hmm. you can see the weapon selector. Mm. And you can see the two switches. So Siri is fire both, Impulse is fire one missile. Mm -hmm. And you also have valve and standard. Valve is pilot inputted data, which is when you want to do some manual setup of your missiles. But since we're using a preset, you need to be the standard. So first switch up to Siri, second down to standard. Happy? Mm -hmm. uh, weapon selection needs to be attack. And I'm pretty certain that's the that's the setup done. Simple as that, boys. Right? Okay. This is the RB15, is it? Uh, 15F, yes. Is this a long range one? Yeah, this is 70 kilometers. Right, excellent. How exciting. No worries, so, the one is a lot easier. Good. So, to run, quickly run through it again. Weapon selected to attack. You want impulse and standard on the two switches. Uh, you want to type your data into 840 and 2. Make sure you reset to act pause out and put master mode to nav. That's the stuff you want to do on the ground. You've got all the weapon setup done there. Then we're going to take off, we're going to fly our waypoints, uh, and then if uh, our target waypoint M3, let's say, is over the ships, we're going to fly towards that. Flick our radar on, so that's to uh, mode A1, which is the wide search area mode. And we're just going to fly forward, and you'll see for most of it, just a white screen, pretty much. Uh, and when the ships appear, there'll be quite visible black dots on the screen. And once you've found them, that's when you want to start doing the setting up of your missile waypoints. So first of all, you press BX and then 8 on the data panel. Hot, slew it over the ships, lock it up, and then you want to adjust your BX 6 and 7. So BX 6, adjust, BX 7, adjust. And then once you're happy with those, uh, you'll want to go to A and F. And you'll get a little timing line that will appear on your HUD. Let's see if they have a nice picture for us. Ah, yes. If you go down to page 72, you there? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at, uh, see where it says 3H, target mm -hmm. in range, uh, you see there's those three vertical lines and then a horizontal line. When the horizontal line is beyond the three lines, you're out of range, but the moment it shrinks beneath them, you're in range and you're clear to fire. Mm -hmm. It should probably be mentioned that this won't always be there. It only pops up uh, an estimated 40 seconds before you can actually fire the missile. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's not there at all, you're out of range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take a quick look as well. If you reset to BX8, which is you know your target, uh, then your um, the navigation distance meter will display how many kilometers you're in. If you're more than 70, you're not you're not firing that thing. 
So I've got to set up radar slew as well then. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Uh, I, we'll see if we can uh, practice on the ground. I don't I know mean, if it'll work. I mean, keybinds you have to set up. We can go mm. with it later on. Try we'll try to do as much as we can on the ground. Data cartridge is in the slot. Mm -hmm. Look back over to the computer. We want ref Lola. Oh, in. I was in the wrong mode. You losers. Okay, nine, nine, zero, zero, zero. nine, nine. Press LSSKU. Wait for Fuck. the display to turn to all zeros. Reset back to pause out. Waiting for zeros. No, I forgot to press it in. Input. Oh, need to put it into input. Strength. All right, let me let it, let it self cancel. In nine zero nine nine. Let me see. Error. Wait. Did Cap just set 909900 and a bunch of zeros as his vehicle? Okay, vehicle I've done it. Point. Now, what do you want me to type in? Uh, so, you have done that. Now go to act, pause, and out so you don't overwrite all your waypoints because that's very awkward. Roger. Let's now just go test. to B1. Should you get B1 coming up? Roger, and I've got a distance. Yeah, what's the distance? Um, kilometers 13, 1 3. That's what I've got, and just go through B2. So this is a, a check, we won't go in great detail, but right. you should be doing really when you put waypoints in is a, basically a sanity check, make sure they're not anything crazy. Uh, you go through, okay, right, how far away is B2? Right, it's about 40 kilometers, mm -hmm. where is it? Okay, so it's bearing uh, what, 270. 270, and from your flight path you should know, ah yes, 270 makes sense. And you go through 3, 4, 5, etc. To check that they're all actually in sensible directions. Okay. Next, what's next then? Okay. So we want to set um, P-Man. You said waypoint four should be our target. Well, yeah, it's a really race point, but it'll take us in the right direction. Yeah. If you fly to three and then to four, once once you transit from three to four, you should, the target yeah, you should be bang in front of you. All right. Cool. So we'll set waypoint four to be our target waypoint. So go to tact in nine and press B4. And that should change to uh, Mike, Mike four. 4. We have now Mike 4. Yep. Marvellous. And back to act bars and out. It's your default position you want to be in the habit of always putting it back there because if you don't do it, you will cock something up. Mm -hmm. Right, now we want to do practice using the radar. So we're going to go to press BX. And yep. we're going to press 8 on the data panel. Look up at your navigation display. It should say BX8. Roger. Excellent. So... Now we're going to go through how to uh, slew waypoints. I don't know what's going to happen here because they're on the ground, but we'll give it a go anyway. Uh, your me. radar should be at the maximum range of 120 kilometers, mm -hmm. and press T1. Hang on, 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 T1 is that? Okay, so what should happen is there should be, um, uh, there should be a little crosshairs in a circle pop up. However, because we are not yep. near our mark point, I think it hasn't done it correctly. Because uh, we're doing it on the um, ground, it's obviously it's not. It's probably already set up, so it's actually outside of our radar screen. That's what's happening here. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what it is. It's be behind us. In fact, you can look at the um, the display around the compass, and you can see it's about bearing three zero zero. Mm -hmm. So it's behind us. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't actually can, uh, show you what it looks like. Can. I'll show you how to do it. You ready? Watch this. Beep. This vehicle is reversing. Ready. Um, now what you want to do is press... We'll go for B1 because it's close. It says Echo Lima and the way at the moment. By the moment. Yeah, press T0. Uh, press T0. That is that way. Roger. And then we're back to normal. Okay, okay then. So, um, now you want to go to TACT. Roger. In... 9 and B1. So we're setting B1 to be a mark point. We'll set it back in a moment. Uh, but this is just to show you how to move waypoints around. So point yourself like towards that. the waypoint. B1 with the code 9, which is to indicate it's a mark point. So 9 first and then B1. Yes. Yeah. So you're putting the data 9 in and you're giving it the memory address of B1. Roger. And then, okay, okay, I've done that. Right, so now you want to reset to act buzz out, as, as always. Uh, point your aircraft towards the... Um, the waypoint. Annoyingly, and it's what? still got Bravo X-Ray 8 for some reason. It's upset. Ah, yes. So you're in X-Pause out. You want to select B... Just press B1. And it should say Mike. Roger. Yep. Okay, then. So I want you to set your radar to be on the minimum distance. It should be 15 kilometers. So yep. change the, reduce the range. Right. Can you see a circle on your radar display? Oh, on the, on the radar display? 
Uh, no, it's just the usual on the radar display, nothing of any interest. Okay, can you point your aircraft towards ah, the uh, right, yeah. little it's yellow just, tray yeah. on the compass? That I can do. I'm an excellent driver. Yeah, there it is, circle of death. Okay, so, park your aircraft, and I want you to press T1, uh, and you'll see one. that all the lines have disappeared, but yep. over the circle is a crosshairs. Roger. Now use your radar stick to slew it around. Yeah, we I can move it about, okay? So, imagine for a moment that in the middle of that there's a little black dot that's some ships. Mm -hmm. Place your crosshair over the imaginary black dot and press TV and you'll find that the circle shifts to that. Confirmed. Yep, and when you press TV, the it's a three position switch, it drops all the way back down to T0. So you don't have to bother resetting that. Um, yeah, and that's what you do when you've got the X8. I can't get the um, crosshair back. Was it T1 to get the crosshair back? Yeah, it's a T1. Oh, right, yeah. Crosshair's back. Oh, Slew it to imagine some ships somewhere else. Pick it. With just TV. And you're done. What <laughs> okay, Cap, you can technically do what you just did with every waypoint. Ah, any yes. kind of waypoint. The problem is, um, you really... As we just did, you only want to use it for target waypoints and mark points. If you're going to use it for actual waypoints, um, navigation points that is, you will actually shift your entire navigation system instead of, instead of just moving the waypoint to different coordinates, because that's one way to basically fix drift of the navigation system. God. Right. Yeah, it's Cap. The short version is, don't use it for waypoints. Yes, right. if, if your waypoint indicator has an M or a BX, you're safe. If it doesn't, don't touch it. Right. Happy? Very. Um, now we've got the dials for the bombs. I can do that bit. Where's cool. the dials so, for the RB1? Let's start point? on the right. We want attack. You want the uh, weapon release mode switch to be up in Siri, and you want the um, RB04, RB15 release mode switch to be down to standard. And guys, I've got attack. Um, then the next second dial, what do we want on the second dial? Second dial is irrelevant. Okay, we want Siri up. And standard. Val B down. Yep. Okay, now we come across to our data panel. You want to select tact in. Can you remember the code? Uh, well, tell me what we're trying to do at the moment. We are trying to set the um, preset on the missile. 8002. Zero, 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 That's the one. Eight four zeros and a two. Oh, do you have to go in? You do have to go in. Whenever you're inputting data, it always has to be in. Roger. Wait. One, two, three, four. Two, and Before then you confirm it, just check that you do in fact have that code selected. I just make sure you haven't typed too many zeros in. Do, and how do you... is it LS to... Uh, uh, LS, SKU, confirm with that. And what do you do after you've inputted some then data? I'm back to act, pause, and output. Good, because if you want to fiddle around with your nav system and you're intact, weird things are going to happen and you get very confused. Roger. Cool. And finally, you check that your uh, master mode is in nav. Last mode is currently in NAV, yes, and I'm scaled down so to 15 clicks at the moment on the Just radar. remember, you want to fire the weapons in A and F mode, but we're staying in NAV because obviously you want to navigate. Hmm. I've still got my circle at the moment on, on the radar screen, that's okay, isn't it? Uh, yes. Because I've got that, that as a mic one. Well, one. usually during you the selected T0, ingress. you've just reset that. Stand by. There is no B0. Usually during yeah, T0 English is in the, oh. you know, T1, T0. Roger, we're good. T0 to reset the switch. Cool, and press LS, SKU to put yourself back onto the, uh, the takeoff. Roger. Waypoint. Um, cool, so let's take the runway. Okay, brakes set, throttle up. Ready, go. I'm still struggling to see how you crashed. You have to touch literally nothing when taking off. I don't know either. And I just to rotate. To so, Cap, while we have some spare time, uh, run me through what you're going to do once we've spotted the ships. Right, well, uh, the first thing we're going to do is turn our radar on. Going to set it to 120 clicks. Going to look for any black dots. 
and I, I still haven't ascertained whether we set BX6 or 7 up yet, so I really you, don't you know. You set what BX8 first, the computer will automatically determine 6 and 7, and then you simply adjust 6 and 7 for their intent. Right, well, adjusting 6 and 7, I haven't got a clue how to do that, so we're just going to. Same as setting BX8, exactly the same procedure, just a different waypoint. But how do we adjust it though, in like X and Y though? It's impossible. You, you can do it, trust me. It's the same way as doing eight. Oh, okay, right. right, roll. Oh my god. Don't you mess this up, P-Man. Oh, P-Man won't mess this up. Oh, I'm all over the place. Yeah, it's looking pretty Why good. roll into the sun? You'll never make a horseman. So if you get down to um, mode, the minimum distance, uh, 15 kilometers, you will see those ships in front of us on the radar. Right, Cal's backing off formation because I will crash. You won't see me for very long because we're turning your waves, so... Can you see the nice three big blocks? We kind of. Can you put on to 15 kilometers? Yep, yeah, kind of is all you really get in this aircraft. Yeah, I did see the three radar. dots. It wasn't as beautiful cool. as I was hoping, but... Oh yeah, no, it is. You're getting the raw radar returns. Cups in slot, so don't go down, Shaw, whatever you. I think we have. I'm on a right cap. Roger. Ali. So, waypoint 3 is way off in land, but I think once it's off our right hand side, if we turn ah. left onto waypoint 4. I'm on mic 1, guys. Have right. so I fucked up? Just press, um, just press the appropriate button. Roger, I'm going 3. Caps on B3, and I get about 35 miles. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep, mill. Mighty Swedish mill. Right, let's increase the turn. Cool, let's go. Uh, nose is hot now. Two. Three. On 20 kilometers. So you should be able to see all the radar returns from the ground. To the dark. Roger. Spots. So what, is, what am I looking at? Buildings? Uh, so yeah, it's nothing as complicated as that. It is literally every time you receive a radar return from a surface, it will come back on that display as mm -hmm. a dark spot. Uh, if it's a long line, that means that it's something big like a mountain and you can't see behind it. If it's a single dot, it means there's like a unit on the ground where it's got a return, a strong return from it but it hasn't blocked the area behind it. So, could it lock an oil rig by accident? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. It doesn't really lock things, like a... Uh... It must do. You lock a ship up. No, it's what you're actually well. doing is, is you're locating the ship on your radar and then placing a nav point in the same place. So, it's less locking it up and more adjusting your nav system. You see, the, the missile basically has its own INS nav system, and it also has its own radar, so it's doing all the tracking and blocking on its own. Yeah, it's all, it's like a toned down version of the, the Vigans nav and That's been an expensive missile. I mean, it's cheaper than a ship, let's put it that way. Mm. Which is the idea, it might be an expensive missile, but you're hitting hundreds of millions of pounds worth of military equipment, so you can spend a couple of million on a missile still be cost effective. Whereas if you look at the war in Syria, where we throw away a half a million pound missile against a two um. grand pickup truck, I have radar contact on the ships. Tap has nothing that looks like a ship. So it's quite far away, it's um, near the far end of the display. You should see some mine, it looks like they're jamming of some kind. Uh, but there is a quite distinct black dot about ooh, 110 kilometers away. So that's a ship then, is it? It is indeed. Obviously, right? Okay. W once you know what you're trying to look for, it's it's quite easy. Oh yeah, it's a really oh it's a really nice return now. So there's a clear black dot mm -hmm. right ahead of us. No, I one okay, so have we? Have we? No. Okay. You're lit. All you're doing. There's no. There's nothing complicated about this radar. You are picking up radar returns, and it's telling you whether it gets a message back or not. That's right. it. Let's do it. You're, you're just watching to see if radio waves bounce. So, BX-8. 
um, act pros out. Uh, hang on, I have to do that right. BX8. So, you want to select BX8. Now you want to slew that waypoint over the top of those ships. Fucking hell, but how do I get BX8? I'm kind of... BX, and press 8 on the data panel. Roger, yeah, I got it. Right, now slew that over the ships. Stand by. I have to go to T1. T1, slew, TV to lock. Oh, that's the ship's convoys. Hang on, I've got to get back. Uh, what, what range uh, are you reading it at? Uh, they're sub 100 now. How much your azimuth? Uh, dead ahead. They are okay. bearing uh, 29... Uh, sorry, right, two, eight, yeah, Roger, got it, got it, got it. Okay, um, slew. Okay, now we just need to check BX6 and 7, so BX and... I haven't done TB lock. Do you want me to do TB lock? Yes, yes, you need to confirm the waypoint. Okay, I have TB lock. Right, we're going to be at 6, that's way up to my side. So I'm just going to bring that closer in. Uh, right, uh, so I want to go BX6. Okay, that is right to the left, so where do I want to put that? Sharpish. Uh, so you just bring it a bit further out, a bit further to the right. Doesn't have to be precise. Right, I've done that, that's locked in. Okay, now put the X7 and put it kind of near the ships, but not too close. Bravo 7. You want to pretty, pretty much put it between 6 and 8. Oh, fuck! Hang on. It's okay. Right, make no, a mistake. I put my reverse on somehow. Reset. That's fine. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't activate in air because it's clever like that. Okay. Okay, and that goes there. Right. right. Oh, I got now, seven, eight, and six. All now up. reset to BX eight because that'll give you your distance to target. We are five zero kilometers, so we're in parameters. Go to A and F. Okay. The timing line says we're clear to fire. Uh, the timing line is below. Roger. Yep. That was ready to uh, fire. Re three check. Clear ready to fire. Fire in three, two, one, release. I'm yeah, not over the water. I'm not. I'm not over the water. Doesn't That's matter. Fine. Doesn't matter. Roger. Cap is missiles out. All right. Leads missiles out. Okay. Let's do a left roll. Oh, there's well, a missile. Oh, so yeah, we fired it quite close to the ship. We're about 40 kilometers away when we're doing our turn, but if you get uh, stick at that, you I, can fire I, it at the max. Rate. I'm going to put myself on autopilot and yeah, um, we're watch the missiles. Trust okay, ready for bang bang. Good, ready for bang bang. Okay, they're doing their little weave, selecting a target. Two. Beautiful. Bang, there's one down. Jesus, some just missed completely. Yes. Yeah, they, no, they went for the target that got destroyed. And they've just detonated themselves because they hit BX9. Right. Last one's up. Yeah, so th that can happen if they go for a target and the uh, it detonates and they don't see anything behind it. They'll go, right, I've got them here, we're going to go off the BX9. Following the ourselves. next one's, the next one's So up. you can see they're now selecting a target, they're doing the weave, they found it. And... Kaplumi! Bang. Beautiful. So two ships down. We did it. We actually did it. Romeo, Romeo, Bravo. Right, let's go and land, boys. Formation landing, this calls for. And some champagne.